On this episode of Searchers, we're at the first crematory in the United States. So the crematory was built in 1876. Okay. Here That's it is. the original crematory. Yeah. Oh, you gotta be kidding me. Another name. Uh, it's 1835. <laughs> it's 1835. On Searchers, we bring together myth and history to find the truth. crematory was built in 1876. Now it was built by Francis Julius Lemoyne because he was looking for a better way of disposing of bodies. He had been studying the uh, burial practices of the day, determined that because of the burial practices that diseases were being spread, you know, bodies were just being put in rickety pine coffins, being put in the ground. And when rainwater came through or groundwater, that was washing into the water supply. People were drinking that water, getting sick of the same thing and dying. So Francis determined that the best way of disposing of bodies was through cremation. He had no crematories to really base it on. There were none in the United States. He had to write letters and study those that were made in Europe to design his here. He really faced a lot of opposition from the community because people felt cremation was barbaric, that it was pagan, that it went, went against Christianity. And so he decided to try to come up with a whole new type of cremation. And so his crematory, the flames never touched the body. The body was put into an enclosure and then basically superheated till the body broke down. He was getting that furnace to over 2000 degrees. And it was a whole new type of cremation that was being used. It really didn't quell the people. They were still opposed to it. So instead of building the crematory in town like he had hoped, he built it up on the edge of his property, up on a hill that is today known as Gallows Hill because of the hangings that took place there. The area up there has been untouched. As far as we know, no one has detected there. So I'm really hoping the guys are gonna be able to find something that we can really tie to that location, to that building. Maybe it's from the construction of the building itself, but it also could be from the first cremation. When the first cremation occurred, it was 1876, and it was a gentleman by the name of Baron de Palm. And this is the first cremation in the United States, so it was big news. You had over 5,000 people up on that hilltop waiting to see what was gonna happen. They came just for the cremation. It's like when they used to have hangings in the 18th century and early 19th century. These were the spectacles of the day, cremation was it. And so they came to see what was gonna happen. They were up there for hours waiting for the furnace to heat up, waiting for the body to be put in, and then waiting for the cremation to take place and the furnace to cool down enough that you could go back in to get the ashes. So I really hope that they're gonna be able to find things to tie to that building, to that location, that'll help us tell the history of the Lemoyne Crematory in Washington, PA. We're here at the crematory and only a few minutes in we start finding things. Strange hit here. You know, it, it kind of registers low, but then it ranges really high. So I'm not, not really sure what it is at this point. Cut nail. Looks like a rose head, too. Hey, I think I got something over here. You know, it's got a, it's not a bad reading, but not a great reading. Um, but it's still kind of ringing high. So let's, uh, let's check out and see what this might be. You know, a lot of times, Sometimes this stuff could be, you know, lead sounds a certain way, copper has a certain sound to it, and uh, even silver. And it definitely the metal, the metal out here, definitely has a low gravelly sound to it. All right, let's see here. Oh, hey, it's right down here, it looks like. Hey, check it out. I think this is it. Yeah, this looks like a... Uh, you know, it's probably an attachment for something, either for a piece of clothing or maybe even for a shoe. Um, you know, with these little copper rivets here, it looks like it's a piece of brass. You could see the copper right there. Um, you know, maybe this is on a shoe. You know, you look at the uh, late 
1800s, early 1900s, the shoes had those little clasps and everything. That might be what that could be. Um, shoes break all the time. And uh, stuff like this always falls off of people's clothing. So pretty cool find. I gotta look at this hole. I dug this a little bit ago. I got a signal on it. I got the hole opened up. I couldn't find anything in it, even with the pinpoint. But I'm still getting a signal over it. I gotta look at this again. real easy to dig the second time. Please let another nail. Oh, not a nail. That, if I had to guess, obviously a buckle, that would be from a pair of late 18th century knee breeches, or early 19th century knee breeches. They had uh, essentially shorts. Um, what my parents always referred to as pedal pushers that came just below your knee and there was a strap right there that kept it below your knee and that would have been the belt the buckle used to tighten the strap to keep it from riding up so very cool and most likely predates the crematory again very nice find very nice well, i got a hit here about five and a half inches down which puts it lower than modern pinpointer says it's right here but this is off a wet area too so I don't know what I'm gonna get not what I got here some kind of bolt well it wasn't a nail because I got a pocket full of those You know, you really did find a lot of nails out there. I, I, yes, I did. I found a lot of nails. I found enough nails to probably build a new house. You know, maybe you should switch from one of those pouches on the side to the ones in the front with all the nails. I think I just get a, need to get a carpenter's apron. That's exactly what I'm talking put about. Put all the nails in it. Yeah. <laughs> wow, a lot of stuff in here. It looks like there might have been an old dump or something. A lot of little hits and everything. Hey. Now that's not a bad one there. They're actually reading pretty good. Check this one out. Alright, we we'll the old pinner pointer here. Hey, there's something right in the hole right here. Oh, hey, <gasps> it's round. I mean, could it be a coin? Hey, Rich, I think I might got a, ah, uh, no, it's not a coin, but it's round. I thought it was a coin at first, check this out. You know, I saw that laying that hole on that edge and I thought I had a coin. Do you know what that is? That's a piece of tack. You know, I had a great high pitched, high 70s hit and I was sure it was a coin. You could see right there, it's brass and everything. You know, all the tack on uh, horses is always brass or something like that because all of the, uh, the sweat This is the, the piece right in the front of the bridle. Yeah, that's what it looks like. Where the three, uh, three pieces of leather go yep. together around the nose and then up around the ears for the uh, exactly. harness. That's pretty cool find. That's very I mean, cool. 
shows that they definitely had horses up there. And we know they would have had that because being 1876, yeah. you know, there's no cars around at that point. Well, also might have been the horse used to bring the bodies up here. That's very true. So, Maybe they were parking right here. Maybe they're bringing the wagon in or the carriage or whatever yeah. they had. Exactly. Pull, pull the hearse, right so to speak. Exactly. So, Pretty cool find. Very cool find. You know, we had some really cool finds right from the start. Yeah, but then it started to go downhill a little. Just a little. That's it. That's what I thought. A little piece of foil. You gotta dig a lot of junk at times to find the good stuff. I guess that's... That must have been it. It looks like a little... <clears throat> it's a piece of wire, but... <clears throat> Who knows what it could be off of. <clears throat> hey! At least you're cleaning all the trash out of the area. Yeah, but while I was busy doing that, you were finding something fantastic. All right, I think I got something here. On this detector, sometimes when you hit lead, it bounces between low iron and pull tabs and garbage. So that's what this is doing right here. So I got to dig this and see what I got. Ben Pointer found a shovel. Ooh! Ooh! Yeah, it's lead. That's a round ball. You can see the casting mark. The molds that were used on these were a scissors mold. And that's where the two halves of the mold came together. And. Boy, that is nice. That is very nice. Rich has a musket ball. I know I've got to get busy and find something good. Oh, wow. You know what? This is a pretty good sound here. You know, it's that, wow, it's that mid-range. It has that kissing sound, which usually means one thing, but, you know, we'll see. It can also mean aluminum foil at times. Let's check it out. Not in here. Hey, we got something. It's right here in the it's right here in the upper port. Oh, check this out! Hey, Rich, come here. Oh yeah, this is a really nice find. We have a three-ring bullet. You know, these were, uh, you know, used during the Civil War. Uh, they were used by both the North and the South. This one looks dropped. I mean, you can see there's it's not mushroom. Check oh, it out. Mini it's ball. a nice mini ball. I mean, these were used in infields. Springfield rifles, you know, all 58 caliber. You always have to try and top me. Yeah, but I can't let you have all the fun. Okay. Wasn't the crematory used as the muster point? I wasn't here. Wait, uh, no, it wouldn't have been here because it was built in 1876. Okay. If you remember, Clay was telling us about it when we went down there. He said it was built. So this, you know, these guys must have came up here. Maybe they were marching out of town. Who knows what, you know? Yeah. I imagine they, I know there were groups mustered out of here. Yeah. So maybe they came up to the top on their way, probably down towards Waynesburg, because this would have been the way to go south. That's correct. This is the road to go south. That's correct. Um, maybe they stopped up here, had lunch, and one guy dropped his round, or, or dropped his mini ball. Yeah, Pretty cool find. Think about that. Might have been the difference between him living and dying too. Exactly. One more round. Hey, Rich. Rich, come here. Come here. What you got? 
Okay. You know, there was an old road that came up through here. I'm in all this, like, it looks like sandstone. I mean, look at the, and it's very compact. If you look at it, I'm pulling so it out. It's a roadbed. It looks like an old roadbed. Okay. Here's the thing. Where's it at here? I'm getting something below it. Okay. So, I mean, it, it was a good hit, but it was deep. Well, dig for it. Um, oh, oh. Um, <laughs> um, Look at that in there. <laughs> <laughs> I bet you that's it. Let's just I'll make let, sure. Uh, yeah, yeah, I think that's it. Oh my God, it's <coughs> huge. It's a huge coin. Pick it up. Below the roadbed. Below the roadbed. Or within it. Oh my gosh. Look at this thing. What's it say on it? Yeah, yeah. Wait a second. I might be able to pick this date out. It's 1835. It's 1835. <laughs> it's 1835. <laughs> that means if it's in this bed, this road bed that came through here. Let's see, is Isabel? I think it does. Isabel. I'm not sure what queen that would be at that point or who they would be referencing. Um, oh. it looks Spanish. Yeah, you know what? It's right, Isabella. That's true. Let's see. I got Isabella a little loop. Would be, eh? Let's see here. Yeah, definitely 1835. It says Isabella. I mean, I can't make out the other stuff. We'll have to clean it up just a little bit. But <laughs> what are you thinking? I mean, uh... well, in the early to mid 1800s, the still rather young United States was using coinage from oh, every country. They, they set up to the Civil even past yeah, the even, Civil even War, past the Civil there was War, hundreds of currencies coinage, so. being used in the United States. But I'm trying to think 1835. I mean, what kind of Spanish coin could that be? It has be to be a real. real. It's true. As, as large as that is, it has to be a real. Look at that. Look at that coin. It's seen some use before it was dropped. Now the question is, what's it made out of? I think it's copper. Well, I think it's copper. It's definitely copper. I mean, you can see right there. There's the 1835, and there's there's her picture. She got like she has a little bit of a bun on the top of her head going on there. It was, and the thing of it is, if you look how worn the face of her is, well, that isn't all the wear from being in the ground. No, no, that's in that, someone's pocket. That, that's been in that's been in a lot of pockets. <laughs> Maybe even a couple of houses of ill repute. It could be. It's interesting how it goes. It's very here. interesting. That's an interesting thing. I mean, check that out. There it is. Queen Isabella. That's right. Queen Isabella. Look at that. Queen Isabella. Maybe she'd like to kiss Rich. Or Rich would like to kiss her. You want something to kiss? I'll give you something to kiss. You know, all kidding aside, you did upset her. Hmm. We got more detecting to do. Mm-hmm. I'm getting some weird hits, like three different signals. I'm getting, again, the low iron garbage, which tells me lead on this detector. And I'm also getting hits that say coin. So I'm kind of confused. I want to see what we got here. Well. That's definitely lead. Something flattened out. It's lead. I don't know if that was a bullet, if that was a part of a bale seal, uh, but it's definitely lead. Okay, so there's the there's the low iron garbage signal. Set that there. I'm getting another hit. Well, there's coin. I believe, yep, that's a penny. It's in rough shape, but you can still see the little bit of the Lincoln Memorial on the back. Uh, that one's been in there for a while. 
almost indiscernible from a penny other than the Lincoln Memorial. One more hit. Brian? Yeah. You're going to want to come here. <laughs> well, what do you got outside the hole? Look at what's inside the hole first. Oh, that is a big coin. Look at that, Holy baby. Holy cow. Look at that. You got your loop? You know what I do? I do. I have it here. You know what? Oh, you know what? It's just about in line where I found that large corn that I found, that 1835. I mean, there might be something up with this. Maybe this is the old road right through here. Well, I can't tell what it is. See if you can. My first thought was I had a large scent. You know, it was really slick, but it, it looked like I could see maybe an E and a D, and I, I thought it might have said United. It was hard to read. It was very hard to read. It was very hard to read. It is. You could see the U right there and the E right there. Okay. Check it out. Look there with the loop. You'll see right in my fingers. You'll see a U on one side, and it has to be United. Or maybe not. I wouldn't be. I don't know. I can't see a D on the other side of that for United. Would you see that there? There's definitely an E on the end. Maybe. C yeah, I see the E. That's gonna take some cleaning. We'll have to. We'll have to. That's, just do that's some and there's definitely a bust on the other side. Yeah, you can see that. But I can't make the rest of it out. No. But whatever it is, that is one I mean, big. It is heavy. Well, the heft of it. That thing is heavy. Oh my gosh, yeah. I can't believe you found those three items in one single hole. Well, you're the one who told me. Check the hole multiple times. If I hadn't, I'd only been had, having a piece of lead and a penny. Yeah, I guess I did give you that advice. Well, we don't know what we got with the coins. So I say, let's get everything cleaned up, take the coins, do a little bit of research, and go see what Clay has to say. Sounds like a plan. Okay. All right, this is Crematory Finds, take three. Here. Yes. Cool face kind of missed behind it. Really that would be actually kind of cool. That would be cool. All right, so Crematory Finds, take three. That's it! All right, guys, so you're back from the crematory. I, I could see you had some good finds. Some of the stuff I can point out, I, I, you know, I can tell what it is, but I'd rather just kind of let you tell me what you found, where you found it, and how it ties into the history of the crematory. Well, you know, um, I think both of us found stuff that's probably a little before, maybe possibly during, and probably definitely after. Um, Rich found a lot more stuff than me, most of the nails, but I I still them. found more than you. Yeah, you did. <laughs> I'll let you talk about those in just a couple minutes. Um, I did find a piece of horse tack, which, you know, it's tough to tell when it was. You know, it could have been maybe up there when it was being used as a crematory. You know, those thousands of people coming up in buggies. Who really knows? I'm, I'm not sure about that. Um, did find some clad probably up there from recent use. And um, interesting find was this aluminum dosing cap uh, from the American Druggist Syndicate. It would have been a cap that would have gone on a cobalt blue bottle, probably from right around 1900 to 1909. Oh, really? um, but you know, that could be something, there's all those older homes around there too. It could have been mm -hmm. a trash dump from that because that came out right near it, which is, that, that looks like either nickel or chrome plating, so definitely 20th century. Right. Um, a piece of lead, not really sure, you know, just a blob of their piece of lead. Um, a, a piece of metal, not sure, off of something. But uh, a couple interesting finds, which may tie to that time of the <clears throat> crematory. One of them would be uh, this, this this little clasp. I think it's off of a, a, a boot or a, a shoe. You know, they, they had the little snaps and clasps, uh, like the lady shoes. That mm -hmm. looks like that, what might, you can see the two rivets on it. Uh, but something that... I was really excited to find that is definitely prior to that building was this three ring 58 cal uh, mini ball. Definitely, you know, Civil War. So you could see troops maybe marching out of town. I don't know if that would, to me, it'd be a great spot to take a rest after coming up that long hill out of Washington. Um, I knew you told us that that was what called Gallows Hill and it was just mm -hmm. farmland up there. So maybe some troops came up there, they stopped because that's not fired, it's dropped. Well, we actually do know uh, when they mustered in, uh, part of the 140th PA was mustered in in Washington, uh, several of the companies, 
and then they marched south. They actually marched to Waynesburg. Well, that was the road to Waynesburg that went right in front of the crematory mm. at one point. That was the route that you would take initially. So we do know they marched that way. They may have rested on top of that hill while they were waiting for everybody to gather and then continued on their way. Uh, just an exciting find. Yeah. Um, that's some of the stuff I found. Rich has some <clears throat> interesting things as well. Well, as you can see, yes, I did find a lot of nails. <laughs> yeah. I seem to have a knack for that. <laughs> well, uh, there's there's some cut ones that would go with the crematory, so that's really abso nice. Absolutely. There's some modern ones, too. Um, also, one thing I did find that I, that I thought was really cool, kind of like Brian's, was a small knee breeches buckle. Oh, okay. Um, you know, they had, they had the little buckle down here to keep their pants from riding up. Um, so that could be 18th century, early 19th century. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Uh, the one find that I really, really liked on this one was this lead musket ball. Now, the cool thing is it's not just a musket ball. If you look on it, there's three dents in the top of it. Hmm. Oh, I can see. You can see, see them. Looks like, look right like here, holes, yeah. like a bowling ball. Well, what that is is where buckshot sat on top of that. That was the infamous buck and ball load. Really? So the buckshot, we couldn't find it, but that thing was obviously fired because the buckshot made the dent in the top of the ball. Okay. So I, I, that was really cool. Okay. I, I mean, great find, guys, but there are two things that are kind of standing out that you've not talked about, and I'm really curious why. Well, you know, we like to save the best for last. <laughs> okay. And now, now we said we found some stuff that was a little later, probably during the time, and something that was definitely prior to we did find these Civil War possible, you know, drops maybe. Uh, but these two finds even predate the Civil War, I believe. Okay. Now, as you said, that was one of the roads out of town. That was one of the early roads out of town. I mean, that's part of Nemecolon Trail, an old Redstone Road that went to Redstone Old Fort, which is modern-day Brownsville. Brownsville, Because right. that tied right back into 40, <clears throat> correct? That, that went over and it kind of paralleled it or something What like is that. currently Route 40? Yeah. yeah, the National Road followed portions yep. of that, yes. Well, when I was digging the hole for this find here, okay, I came down onto a, a very compact layer of sandstone. Now, it wasn't, you know, I, when I hit it, a lot of times you think, oh, I'm in the sand. I mean, when you dig, you're going to dig through an A horizon down into what you call B, <laughs> and you're going to get the, the, the bedrock underneath it. I mean, that's what you're going to find, especially on top of that hill up there. Right. Bedrock, but it wasn't bedrock because I'm getting a signal in it. So as I started digging into it and breaking it up with my shovel, this popped out. I think what that is, that that sandstone was the old roadbed. I know a lot really? of old roadbeds were laid with sandstone. I mean, because they're going to get muddy, so you got to do something to keep the mud down on them. Right. Uh, but that was within it. That is a real. Its denomination is eight maravedis. It has Isabel on one side, and it's 1835. Wow. Yeah, I mean, that's exciting because I found it underneath the stone. So... It was either dropped while they were putting the stone down or dropped prior to when they put the stone down for that road. And I think what you have up there is the portion of the old roadbed is in the yard of the Lemoyne Crematory. I mean, that would make sense looking at some of the maps. I could, I could definitely see that. Okay. I know there's something else you're eyeing here on the table, and I'm going to let Rich explain that. Okay. Well, Brian's coins in 1835. As you can see... That coin's a little larger, a little thicker. It's also a little older. Really? <laughs> it's a little closer to the United States, I believe. Yeah. But still across the ocean. Okay. I found that directly in line with where he found his real. Okay. On the other side of the crematory but directly in line with it. Okay. I pulled three things out of that hole. I kept getting multiple hits. The first one I pulled out was the modern penny. Okay. The next one was the piece of lead. <laughs> Might be a bale seal. Thankfully, the third one was that beast. Okay, what is it? <laughs> that is a 1799 French decime. No way. <laughs> Which decime, I believe, means dime in French. Right. So, but that's a big dime. Wow. So, 17, so 1835 and 1799. Yeah. Now, he didn't find it in the same sandstone that I found mine in. But when you look at, like you're <coughs> saying, I mean, 
almost the exact same distance off the side of the road. Hmm. It's parallel to it. It's in the same line. I mean, I think that verifies that the old roadbed goes right through there. Well, so what I'm saying is you guys were able to find some things that may be tied to the history of the site. Maybe to the crematory, but definitely mm -hmm. to the history of the site. Mm -hmm. But what I'm excited about is possibly finding that old road. So, I, I mean, I'll ask the archaeologist in the group, but I'm thinking what we need to do is go back maybe hit it again with detectors one more time just to see what's there and maybe survey it maybe do an archaeological survey yeah i what i'd like to do is definitely let's go back up there resurvey it again we'll work it a little bit slower um but definitely i think we open up one location we're going to open up is where i found this uh because we know we have what i think is the old portion of the, ro of the road bed um and it wouldn't be I, I think it'd be a good idea to open up over over that site as well you know, two units, see what we get. Um, you know, the, the one thing that we don't find is all the glass, all the ceramics, you know, stuff like that, which is just as important to telling the story and the history of the site as the metal objects. You know, because right. we're just looking at one portion of the material culture. So we went up looking for items that tell the history of the Lemoyne Crematory and maybe found uh, the story of old Redstone Road which is one of the more historic roads in western Pennsylvania. Yep. yep, and the people that used it. So let's go back and find out if that's really what it is. That's what Absolutely. I'm waiting to do. Excellent. I love it.